Hey y'all, welcome back. Happy Sunday. I hope you've all had a great weekend so far. I hope you've had time to uh, spend with your families and to be able to relax and recuperate. You know, that's uh, definitely what I've been trying to do. Uh, today we're going to be reacting to a video titled, Are You a Man? A very powerful speech and this is by Mohamed Hoblos. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And I know him from the YouTube shorts. I've seen uh, some clips of him, and I believe he's from Australia. And he is a very uh, passionate and powerful speaker. And so this uh, title, Are You a Man? You know, it caught my attention. Uh, we've been talking about um, men in general and young men and trying to stay on the right path and trying to help coach young men how to stay on the right path. And just based off what I've seen uh, here from Mr. Uh, Muhammad Hoblos, I believe that he's probably going to have some uh, interesting things to say, and I think it's going to end up being very positive. So uh, I'm ready to see this, so let's get into it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, mashallah, some beautiful faces. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know what alaikum ya rabb. Um, can I kindly ask that before we start, inshallah, please no one to be recording. So I can already see some of the brothers, they're holding their phones, trying to hide it. Uh, please, if I can kindly ask, inshallah, to put your phone away. Uh, don't record, not audio, not visual. And I'll tell you why, because once your phone starts recording, your heart stops recording. And there's no point in your phone benefiting and you and I were not benefiting. So please, can I kindly ask the brothers, so not record inshallah that's the same for the sisters as well may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you guys as well also yani before I start wallahi yesterday I didn't get a chance but I wanted to thank uh, Sheikh Abdul Salam and brother Rabia and the committee of Majid al-Sunnah for opening their doors and inviting me may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and bless them and put nur in this masjid you know this is a, it's a beautiful sign when 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 doors are opened for mahabba and for unity so I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the shaykh and to bless the brothers that are involved. Taib. <laughs> Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the king, the master, the sustainer, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we send peace and blessings upon his beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's a lot I want to mention. <laughs> and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes it easy. But I ask for your undivided attention, please. Please for your undivided attention. You know, many of us, we come to a talk. Please brothers, no pictures. Please brothers, no pictures, no recording. Many of us, we come to the talk or you come to a Friday khutbah, or you come to a lesson, and there's this sickness where you come to see how will the sheikh or the speaker or the imam, how will he entertain me? Or how will he inform me of something? And therefore you find a lot of times today, people go shopping for speakers that they like. This is very, very dangerous because this will limit your benefit. The reality is, whenever a Muslim goes to any gathering, we should sit in that gathering asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our hearts. And you benefit only according to how much you want. That's why Depending on where you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will take something from the message. You know, sometimes you learn something from the speaker that the speaker himself had no intention on teaching you. Sometimes you learn something from a speaker. The speaker himself had no intention on teaching you that particular lesson. But that was based on your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was based on your hunger your sincerity so Allah will teach you things you know sometimes Allah will teach you from means that you that you never thought possible well Allah, sometimes Allah will teach you by watching an animal sometimes just by watching two animals Allah might teach you a lesson 
I absolutely, <clears throat> excuse me, I absolutely agree with that. Uh, it's easy to be distracted by our cell phones and television and Netflix and video games and just whatever, all this stuff, you know. Uh, it, it, like, don't be distracted by that. When you're living life, you're actually living in the moment. Like he was telling them to, you know, kindly put their phones away and no pictures so that they can live in the moment, you know, to pick up that lesson. So I, I agree with that. When you're living life and you're not living through a distraction, you are going to pick up wisdom from places that you did not think you were going to. All right, let's go. Sometimes just by watching two animals, Allah might teach you a lesson that you could never find in a book based on what you want. So tonight, based on what you want, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give. You see, my brothers and sisters, every single man, Rajal in Arabic, every man is a male. But not every male is a man. Every man, every Rajal is a male. But not every male is a man and there's a very big difference between the two. You see, most of us, we like to think we're men, Rijal. Speak to anyone and tell him, brother, are you a man or a male? And instantly you will see a reaction in him. Almost as if, brother, are you questioning my abilities? Are you questioning my honor and my dignity? Every man is a male, but not every male is a man. You see, being a male, my brothers, doesn't make you special. Being a male doesn't make you special. Because you were born that way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you male. And in fact, even that, you know, yesterday, you didn't even have to be born a male. Yesterday, you didn't even have to be born a male. You could go and get a surgery and become a male. Today, you don't even need the surgery. Today, you just have to think. You just have to feel that you're a male. And legally, the law will accept you and protect you and give you the rights as a male, regardless of what you are, based on a thought based on a feeling. So being male doesn't make you special, but to be a man, to be a rajal, there's no surgery for that, my brothers. There's no hormones for that. To be a rajal, that's not a feeling that you can claim in your heart and then all of a sudden you become a rajal. That's not how it works. To be a man, that's not something you can get tattooed on your arm. See, many of us, we like to, we like to look like we're tough. We like to present ourselves that wish. To be a rajal, that's not something you can get tattooed. To be a rajal, to be a man, you see, look, even in the Quran, Whenever something is of importance, whenever something is of high regards, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses Rijal, men. Whenever it's something general, it's something that is not overly important, Allah says, Dhakar, males. Distinguishing that there's a big gap between the two. And tonight, my brothers, I want to ask you and I, how will you stand in front of Allah as a Dhakar or as a Rijal? As a dhakar or as a rajal, which one? You see, who determines who is the rajal? Who? What is the criteria of being a man? Unfortunately, now our society is pushed by social media. It's pushed by media, movies, entertainment industry is now shaping societies. And unfortunately, even Muslims, practicing Muslims, have taken the traits of Jahiliyyah and tried to make it deen. So if I was to ask anyone here, brother, what makes a Rajal? What makes a man? If we're honest tonight, if we're really honest tonight, in our society today where we live, 
there's a lot of honor and respect and glamour given to the one that knows how to fight. Have you noticed this? Anyone who knows how to physically handle himself, huh? anyone who knows how to throw a few punches, in our society, this is admired. This is loved. This is considered an attribute of a rajal. That if you know how to fight, this is why now MMA is such a big thing in our community. Boxing is such a big thing in our community. Wrestling and all of these physical contact sports. Sports that the Prophet Sallallahu clearly made haram because of, the, because of the striking of the face. But really deep down, we don't care about what the Prophet really thinks. We care about what the society think. And now if you don't know how to fight, then brother, you're not considered as a man. You know, that's, uh, there is truth in that in the way that uh, many people in society view that. I don't think that the, the hard left or the liberal left <clears throat> would agree with that statement. But typically people in the center and kind of more over to the right side, maybe a bit more conservative, there is kind of an agreement that when a man is strong and um, because it's a symbol that he can protect, though, you know, if you're friends with him or if he's your father or your brother, there's something that you greatly respect about that, you know. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, with mixed martial arts and boxing and, you know, Olympic wrestling and all these things like I'm guilty of it, too. I love those sports um, I have for over, you know, 30 years now. <laughs> and uh, it's very, that's one of my vices that I have to give up. You know, um, there's nothing wrong with, with martial arts, you know, to learn self-defense. Maybe some very light sparring, you know, things like that to get like a, a realistic feeling for it. But the reality is, is when you're punching your fellow man in the face for money, it's wrong. You know, it just, it is wrong. It's factually wrong. Okay, let's go. Considered as a man. So we have this epidemic now. And trust me, this is not new. Muslims understand whatever sickness we're going through, it's not new. The Habib, the teacher, the master, he came to teach. He came to cure the society of all of its sicknesses. But unfortunately, we're made to believe that the Sunnah is 1400 years old. Brother, we're living in a different time, in a different place. La Wallah, it's the exact same diseases. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, please, please, I want you to leave this with me. The Prophet walks into the masjid one day, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes? Walks into the masjid and finds the Sahaba wrestling. Halal or haram? Would the Sahaba do something haram in the masjid? Audhu Billah, no. So clearly halal, they were wrestling in the masjid. Wrestling, not, uh, not striking the face, wrestling in the masjid. So he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, walks into the masjid and sees the gathering. You know, I, I just, I just, because I have a very strange way of thinking. Let me think out loud with you. And Allahu Alam, I'm not saying this is sharah of the hadith. No, these are just my thoughts. You know, sometimes, sometimes you're doing something with your friend and it's funny between you and him, it's funny. But then someone walks in and all of a sudden it goes from funny to looking very foolish. Have you ever had that? You know, sometimes you're someone walks in halfway through the joke and doesn't see the joke, and, and then you start, oh yeah, Allah, what a jubsa, what an embarrassment. So the sahaba, this is this is how I'm thinking, you know. The sahaba they're wrestling in the masjid, and then imagine imagine Rasulullah walks in Imagine, imagine the honor, the hazza of the man walks into the masjid and sahaba are wrestling. So Allah, me personally, I can't help but think. You know now, not the Prophet, a Sheikh walking, jealous bro, pull up man, the Sheikh see ya bro, the Sheikh see. You know in high school, whenever we were doing something and the teacher was coming, we had a code word, Ija, 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 it's in Arabic, because in his coming, it's coming. Wallah, the principal knew what Ija meant, right? Because everyone says it. So imagine now the Sahaba, they're wrestling, and now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam walks in. So you can imagine what happens to the companions. So they all, Wow, embarrassing. And then he asks, he says, what are you doing? Please, please. Didn't the Prophet know what they're doing? 
honestly, honestly tell me something. Didn't he know what they were doing? He knew exactly what they were doing. But the hadith is not just for them, it's for every Muslim to the day of judgment. And I tell you, Islam is ancient. Habibi, Islam is contempt. Wallah, wallah, qasam. Sometimes I will read or hear a hadith or read a verse and it's like Allah said these words in 2019 March. That's how alive the Quran is. People tell me it's old. So he walks in, he sees them wrestling. He says, what are you doing? Ya Rasulullah, marra man, let it go. Khalas, <laughs> he walked in, we've stopped wrestling, leave it. But he saw, because he's the doctor, he's the teacher, and he's there to cure the sicknesses of societies. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, we are, we're wrestling. Then he asks, why are you wrestling? Look at the salt now. Now the salt is straight to the wound. Imagine the Sahaba, yeah, Allah, who's going to explain why we're wrestling? Who? Who's going to explain why we're fooling around? So they said, Ya Rasulullah, we're wrestling to see who of us, who amongst us is the... Ah, who's the Rijal, brother? Has anything changed in 1400 years? Anything changed? La Allah, it's exactly the same. They're not doing anything haram. Rasulullah knows that, that, that they were. But he was worried about something far deeper. So what does he say? He said, the Rajal, the man amongst you is not the one that can physically put down the other. Any meathead can do that. That's not how we determine who the Rajal is. We all need to listen up right now, all the men here watching this, because I already know that he is going to say something that we all need to hear. Uh, like I said, I, I've seen him before, and um, he has a way of connecting and telling the truth, and you, <laughs> you can feel what he's saying, and I just, I can, I already know it's coming. Imagine how the Sahaba felt. Imagine when the Prophet is telling him, this is not how we determine men. He said, the Rajal amongst you, the man amongst you, please, my young brothers, please, don't fall for the fitna of the street, man. This deed will make a man out of you. The street will only make a thug out of you. He said, the Rajal amongst you, the man amongst you, is the one who when a musiba, when a calamity happens, he can control his anger and his wrath. He can control it. He's patient. This is the man. Go to the UFC gym and tell them this. Brothers are spending hours, hours, and it's fine. Tonight I'm not mentioning anything about halal and haram. So don't come and say, look, one of the brother was saying it's halal and haram. Please, my brothers, halal and haram, this is kindergarten language. Kindergarten language. We need to develop, we need to move on. We need to start having a deeper relationship with Allah. Deeper. The Prophet is telling him deep depth. This is not the man. The man is when something befalls, he's what? Ah, he controls. Try this. Try it. Yalla, I challenge everyone in the try it. See how difficult it is. Understand why when Allah mentions Rajal, there's honor and azza behind the word. Today we say man to anyone. Anyone that can throw some punches, yeah, he's a man. So we have another epidemic. You might tell me, no, 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 brother, you don't have to physically fight. What's the other epidemic we have in our community, in our society? How do we determine who's the Rajal? 
How big is he, brother? We have a steroids epidemic now. Muslims, Muslims, Muslims. Ya Allah, steroid. Don't ask me halal and haram. But the sickness, the sickness. Have you ever heard of the sickness called the small man syndrome? Have you ever heard of this? Small man syndrome? No, you've never heard? Small man syndrome is the small guy who feels like all the bigger guys never take him seriously. So he starts doing things that are out of his character in order to show them that look, I'm a man as well. They call this what? Small man syndrome. And qasam by Allah, 99% of brothers on steroids, it's all small man syndrome. It's insecurities in the heart. That if I don't look intimidating, if I don't look physically strong and muscly, I'm not a man. So brothers will be bench, you know, he'll bench press 100, 120, Allah alam what they're bench pressing. He'll bench press amazing weight and it's recorded and snapchatted. But the same brother cannot lift a blanket for Fajr. I was in the gym. Ah, the, wallahi, the same brother. Yet yeah, can't lift up a blanket for Fajr. He's saying cannot lift up a blanket for Fajr. Uh, I'm not sure what that means in, in this context. Okay, let me go back just a bit. Ah, yeah. the, wallahi, the same brother. Yet yeah, can't lift up a blanket for Fajr. We have a steroids epidemic. Steroids now. Everyone's Abishak Sheikh. And you know what's funny? You know what's funny? Everyone's on steroids, but no one says it. And we're supposed to all act like, oh, okay, be, you know, because you're not saying it and I'm not saying it, so therefore it's not happening. I see a brother today, he's a pencil neck. He leaves, six weeks later, he's got muscles on his ears and his nose. So I'm thinking, brother, yani, <laughs> Tabarakallah, Allahu Akbar, how did you get so muscly? So, he's, so, now, so now he's trying to convince me, you know, because I'm the fat one. And therefore, I don't, you know, clearly I don't understand the gym. Brother, uh, uh, alhamdulillah, I've been eating well. Habibi, what are you eating, Yali? What, 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 what are you eating that's put muscles on your ears and your nose, brother? T -t -t tell me, tell me how. No, nah, well, you know, you know, you know, brother, I've been eating tuna and rice. So I'm thinking, brother, wallahi, I've been eating tuna and rice too. But how, yeah, 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 and how come? Uh, so we're all in denial. We're in denial. Small man syndrome to look big to look intimidating. This makes me a man in the community. Ah, just before summer comes, now everyone hits the gym. Why? So when it's a hot day and I go to the gym, you know, and I go to the beach at Bondi, and I take, look how shallow we've become. Wallahi, it's embarrassing. But this is not new. This is not new. The Prophet Sallallahu please, please live this with me, bro. The Prophet is walking in Medina. Imagine walking in Medina. Yeah, he's, these are absolute facts that he's saying, um, especially from probably the age of like 16, 17 until around 30. Uh, I was like not involved in a professional or amateur level way of bodybuilding, but just in my own personal life, it was something that I really enjoyed. And that is part of the reward that you get or think that you get is, you know, you want to get your body fat super low and get all your, your muscle tissue back, you know, your muscles balanced out, very be very symmetrical and just all that stuff, you know, and like you do have that intent in your mind so that other people can see it and I guess enjoy it or envy it. But that uh, that mentality is so unhealthy uh, for so many reasons, and also steroid use. I'm completely against that. I, I I put that in the same category as almost like transitioning sexually because you're altering yourself to such a degree that it's like I don't know. It's it's just much too unnatural, and it's just super unhealthy for you. But uh, yeah, let's go, man. Live this with me, bro. The Prophet is walking in Medina. Imagine walking in Medina. And he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he sees the companions that they've gathered around the tree. But you know these stories, they, they, then you wish you were there. <laughs> what a time, man. So he sees them gathered around the tree. So he goes to the tree, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Then when he gets there, he notices 
Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Ever heard of this name, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud? Ya haram ala this Brothers told me, brother, I don't know what to name my son. Wallah, I want to rip my hair out when people tell me this. So he comes to the companions and they've gathered around a tree. Imagine, imagine. So he comes to the tree and he notices Abdullah ibn Mas'ud hanging off the tree. What happened was, there was dates on the tree. So the Sahaba, they said, who's going to climb the palm tree and get us the dates? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud wasn't a very big guy. In fact, he was the opposite. He was very skinny. And he was very, like, he was very active. He's very fit. So Abdullah says, look, I'll climb the tree and I'll get the dates. Now, you need to leave this with me. It was very common fashion for the Sahaba that they used to wear the lungi. You know, the... Uh, the lungi, the, the what, what's, what's it called? The uh, izar, izar is it? Yeah, like that skirt. Right, yeah, like, like the one they have. This was very common fashion for the Sahaba. Very, very common. In fact, many of them, this was all that they would, and don't think that, the, you know, it's like today, while they had these nice under armor boxer shorts under them, you know, no, no, no. They wore the izar, Habibi, there was nothing under there. Nothing under there. So what? They were laughing and giggling. So the Prophet came Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said to them, what are you laughing at? Remember, remember? You know, sometimes you're laughing, it's funny. But when someone asks you, brother, what are you laughing at? It's hard to explain. So therefore the laughter is taken away and then it becomes very awkward. He said, what are you laughing at? What are you going to tell the Prophet of Allah? So he said, Allah, what a time then. So he looks at the tree and he finds Abdullah. He said, are you laughing at Abdullah's legs? They said, yes, O Prophet of Allah. Look how skinny they are. He said, I swear by Allah, the legs that you're laughing at are heavier than the mountain of Uhud in the eyes of Allah. Rajal, bro. A man. Not determined by steroids. Rajal. Men. Not determined by their ability to bully other people, man. But qualities. So you might tell me, no, 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 brother, look, this is the new age, brother. It's not about physically fighting and it's not about being physically big. But in our hearts, what determines who the Rajal is? Uh, this one, bro. We're obsessed with this. Okay, I'm assuming he's talking about money. So before we get on that topic, I just, I want to go back for a second and uh, you know, throughout my life, something I've always uh, uh, noticed and seen and respected is leadership and individuals <clears throat> um, and to be able to to handle stressful situations when other people don't seem to be able to do it. Like if someone steps up to the plate or even if they're already in the leadership position and they handle it, that's something that I've always uh, paid attention to and looked up to and, and always hope that it, when I'm in those situations, I can uh, perform in that exact same manner. You know, as uh, <clears throat> when when negative things happen, somebody has to do something. You know, and all of us need to look within ourselves and say that we're that person. You know, in that moment, like we need to do something. That's what Rachel. That's what men do. Is when hard times come, we we handle the situation and we just have to try our best. You know. All right, let's go. We're obsessed with this. The one that has money, brother. Today, if you have money, wallah, you can take the spot of the sheikh. But uh, tabarakallah, he gave $50,000 at our last fundraising dinner. Yeah, so inshallah, he's going to be leading the prayer for the next week. We love money. We honor money. We deem money as a, as a regel. Brother, I provide, brother. 
I, I provide, brother. I've had grown men come to me and tell me, brother, my son has brought me great shame. My son has brought our family great humiliation. So I'm thinking, Allahu Akbar, astaghfirullah, what did he do? Did he do zina and he had a baby? Yeah, 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 yeah. Great shame to the family. So I'm thinking, uh, it's awkward, you know, but I'm, what did he do? He says to me, brother, he's 30 years old. He still hasn't bought a house. This is deep down in our hearts. So our ability, my ability to make money determines how much of a rajal I am. I ask you sincerely, don't answer. Don't answer. Rhetorical question. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the standards that we live in today, is he a man or not? Don't answer. Don't answer. By the standards that we live in today, is he a rajjal or not? What a dilemma. What an awkward position we've just been cornered into. Today the sister tells me, I wish I was married to the Prophet Sallallahu Sister, please, Karmel Allah, just sit down, inshallah, and stay on your Facebook, please. Or he, she wishes she was married to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is, this is, this is all wishful thinking, you know. My ability to, to make money determines how much of a rajjal I am. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no, Aisha, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, no, authentic narration in Bukhari, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And please don't misunderstand what I'm about to say. What I'm about to say doesn't mean that we have to intentionally be poor. No, that's not what I'm saying. No. But this idea that being rich will bring me success, that being rich will make me a man, this is a sickness. Aisha is telling her nephew Urwa, in the authentic narration, she says to me, Urwa, oh, the son of my sister, she said, I swear by Allah, we used to see the moon, then the full moon, then the full moon. The sister that wants to, you know, you know, the sister that wishes she was married to the Prophet. I hope you're listening. I hope you're listening. Today the sister complains, my husband hasn't taken me out to dinner in two weeks. He's a bakhil, brother. He's a bakhil. He's a nishah. He's a nishah. He's a bakhil. It's been two weeks we haven't gone to dinner. But oh my God, I would love to be married to the Prophet. Aisha is telling her nephew, we used to see the moon, then the full moon, then the full moon. Two consecutive months, 60 days. 60 days would go by and there would be no cooking and no boiling, no flames, no cooking and no boiling in any of the nine houses of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is he a shell or not? Don't answer. Please don't answer. Don't embarrass yourself. Nine houses, nine wives, Aisha is saying two consecutive months. No cooking and no boiling. Is he a man or not? Look at the dilemmas that we live in. When Dean is no longer the, the measuring stick, when Dean and Allah and his prophet are no longer the ones who dictate, when social media and, 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 and public perception is what drives us. Look at the calamities. Wallah, I've seen people, they struggle when they hear what a, uh, brother, what are you trying, Habibi, Wallah, Qasim, it's in the hadith, it's not me. But we pick and choose what we want from deen. We try to make the 21st century, we try to make Islam that look, yeah, with all of the... Habibi, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this deen started strange and it will return to being strange. So glad tiding to the strangers, yet every single one of us is trying to be exactly like everyone else. My dress is like the non-Muslim. 
My food is like the non-Muslim. My schooling is like the non-Muslim. My appearance is like the non-Muslim. My house is exactly like the non-Muslims. My dreams and my ambitions of owning a house and taking my family on a holiday at the end of the year and driving every ounce of my body's ambition is exactly like the non-Muslim. My name was Muhammad, I changed it to Mo. My name was Mustafa, I changed it to Steve. Every, every ounce of me is dripping non-Muslim. Yeah, but brother, Alhamdulillah, I'm a Muslim. The Prophet says, glad tidings, hani'an, hani'an, glad tidings to the stranger. Honestly, who feels like a stranger, bro? Who? Who, bro? You walk into any restaurant, halal, not halal, is it? Allah, kullu meshi, brother, bismillah, oh God, brother. Where, 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 deep down in our hearts, where, where, where? So Urwa couldn't believe his ears. Urwa, he's young, couldn't believe his ears. So he says, oh, my auntie. My auntie. Two months, no cooking, no boiling. How did you survive? She said to him, Al-Aswadan, Al-Tamru wal ma." Dates and water is all we had for two consecutive months. That's all we ate. Where's this sunnah? No, that's not sunnah. Brother, this was zuruf. Zuruf. The Prophet went through difficulties, sallallahu alayhi wa Look at, look how sick we've been. Yeah, and not only, look, you know what? It's one thing when the brother says to me, listen, I have an addiction and I'm trying to deal with my addiction. Wallahi, I will appreciate it. Look, the man knows he has a problem. No, but I have an addiction and I'm in denial about my addiction and I try to use Dean to justify my actions. Isn't that interesting? So you might tell me, look, brother, you know, maybe the Prophet was going through hard times on his deathbed, on his deathbed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was going through Sakarat al maut conscious, unconscious, in and out, in and out. So he lost consciousness. Aisha is there, radiallahu ta'ala anha. Then he wakes up. Then he says to Aisha, authentic narrations. He says to Aisha, imagine, Aisha was 18 years old when the Prophet died. How old was she? 18. And Allah called her and the others in the Quran, Allah called them Ummahat al Mu'mineen, the mothers of the believers, meaning they have become haram on every man. And yani once the Prophet dies, وسلم, no one can remarry her. 18 in a world and in a society where the man was everything. Imagine this 18 year old is watching her husband die. At the eight, and she has her whole life that now she knows I'm gonna be alone. I can never remarry after him. So he wakes up from his, you know, he was unconscious. And says to Aisha, How much money do we have? This sunnah no one talks about. Sheikh, please, man, put these stories behind. Let's speak about investments and stocks and let's speak about buying houses, brother. Because in our hearts, we believe that honor, that money will restore the honor of Islam. So she says to my Prophet of Allah, all that we have is seven gold coins. Imagine a man with nine wives. Is he a man or not? By the standards that we live in, please don't answer. Don't embarrass yourself. Don't be a hypocrite. By the standards that we live in, is he a man or not? Today, brothers have paid off their houses. Paid off. And he's working to pay off the second and the third because brother, I need to leave something for my children, brother. Exhausting his life. 
بحلال حرام ارين كيف حلال حرام but tell me tell me when the prophet was dying and there were seven gold coins between nine wives is he a man sister sister you know the one oh, i wish i was married to him what chanel handbag was he gonna buy you with seven gold coins tell me man what hair and makeup studio were you gonna go to on a fort fortnightly basis tell me What restaurant were you going to be fine dining in? Tell me, tell me. So he says to Aisha, take the seven gold coins and give them in charity now. You see the sicknesses, my brothers. So he loses consciousness then he wakes up and he says to Aisha Aisha what did you do with the seven gold coins Seven gold coins Ya Rasulullah leave him man let him be <laughs> Aisha 18 years old she's alone haram yani leave her خلاص seven gold coins yani they're not going to make her rich no yeah, yeah, like it's it's no no but there's something far deeper So she says, "Oh Prophet of Allah, look at our mother, man. She said I held on to them. I didn't give them away in charity." He says to Aisha, "Do you want me to die and stand in front of Allah while I still own something from this dunya? Is this how you want me to stand in front of Allah, Aisha?" going on my brothers who's the rajal who who's the man so you might think look brother that, that's that's brother that's rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know look like allah was no in bukhari the dua of rasulullah allahumma ja'al rizqa ali muhammadin qud ya allah make the rizq of the family the hadith is in bukhari Ya Allah, make the rizq of the family, not just Muhammad, Muhammad and his family, sallallahu alayhi Make the rizq and the provisions of Muhammad and his family the bare minimum. I challenge you to make this dua. Wallah, if the Imam made this dua, you would throw a shoe at him from the back. And the brother, what's this dua? Because in our hearts, in the sicknesses of our society, a man is determined by his money. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sitting one day, but Allah, you know, for me, I just uh, it drives me crazy. You know, like you know when we say the Prophet was sitting with Jibril, you know, and no, it's like brothers are sitting there and just hearing it. Like, have you ever thought about that? You know, sometimes you meet a celebrity, you don't know who to show off to. You don't know how many photos you can take from what angle, so you can share it with the world that I had a moment with Fulan or Fulan and this celebrity or that singer or this actor. I'm telling you, the Prophet was kicking back, sitting down with Jibril. Is that normal? What was that gathering like? What were they talking about? And then an angel. That really puts it into perspective with, uh, you know, Jibril and the Prophet Muhammad being in, the, you know, in the, the cave in Mount Hira uh, or just um, at any time that they interacted, you know, and then you compare that to, to taking a photo with a celebrity or something like that. And there's obviously, it's not even the same thing. And as he mentioned, that's just a moment in time. You took a picture with some famous person, you know, and then you share it on uh, Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff, you know, and it's like, like, what are you doing? You know, and, um, <clears throat> It just, uh, it doesn't make sense. It's like you're living through this fake world that's online instead of what is right in front of your face. You know, it's uh, it's just a bizarre thing. All right, let's go. And then an angel came and said to the Prophet of Allah, 
Do you wish to be a king prophet? Or do you wish to be a slave prophet? Uh, come, tell me, but uh, yeah, but brother, you know, that was the prophet, and you know, like he went through tough times, and 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 did he have the choice or not? Were you asleep? Did the prophet have the choice or the angel is telling him, do you want to be a king prophet? Or a slave, but Yanni, you're still a prophet. The prophethood will not be taken away from you. Do you wish to be a king prophet or a slave prophet? So Rasulullah sallallahu looks at Jibreel. So Jibreel hints to him, take the slave. Be a abd, be the slave, Ya Rasul. Good advice or bad advice? Can you see the dilemmas we're in? Brother, yeah, the theory says it's good advice. But the practice says, nah, very bad advice. You know, my brothers, a rijal is not determined by his ability to fight or his physical or this. That's not how a rajal is determined. A real man, my brothers, and wallah, we can speak for hours and I'm not gonna cover what makes a real man. There's a lot to cover. But for me, above all, above all, a real rajal, a real man, is realistic and down to earth and understands that you can't have the pie and eat it too. Have you heard this saying? It's an English saying. They say you can't have the pie and eat it too. Yeah, and you can't have everything, brother. And we're trying to have everything. One of the ulama said that the difference between us and the Sahaba, you know what the difference between us and the Sahaba was? He said they only wanted Jannah. That's all they wanted. We also want Jannah. See the difference? They only wanted Jannah. We, we also want Jannah. Uh, see what's happening? You see, a real man is realistic. A real man is realistic. A real man knows and understands that if I'm going to be a Rajal, See, to be a man, like I said, it's not a taru. It's not something you get. To be a rajal, these are decisions you have to make. They're sacrifices you have to take. And these are, this is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that you have to live. And a real man and a real rajal understands that if I'm going to be a man, I can't be anything else with it. It's either a man or something else. Where am I going with this? A real man is realistic. He understands that when I get married, that when I have children, that when I take on a job, that when I give my word, when I make a commitment, there are sacrifices that have to be made. You see, today we're not men, we're boys. We're little boys that are stuck in big bodies. That's what we are, my brothers. Wallahi, forgive me. But if we're gonna be honest here tonight, we are little boys that are stuck in big bodies. We like to think we're men. We like to think we're men. But when you go by the criteria of Allah and His Prophet, we're very far from it. And here's, here's exactly what I'm saying about being realistic. You see, everyone here, everyone here, we love women. Or at least I like to think you like women. Inshallah, you all like women, yeah? Inshallah, Ya Rabb. We all like women. Who doesn't like women, bro? <sighs> woman makes your heart dance, bro. Me, if I see a woman, I'm gone for a six. Gone for a six. Halas, I know, bro, I know. We love women. 
but no one wants to be married. Have you noticed? We love the idea of being with a woman. Who doesn't like the idea? We love women. But no one loves to be married. Ah, the commitments of being married. The sacrifices of being married. The challenges and the difficulties of being married is something a real man or a shell knows and understands. But we don't. We're boys. We love women, but no one wants to be married. That is an unfortunate thing in our society today is people <clears throat> afraid of that commitment to one person and uh, there's that culture of, you know, trying to be the richest and most successful man and to, I guess, show off or validate yourself better is to have as many beautiful women as you can possibly have. But <clears throat> I just, I don't like that idea at all, you know, and um, I'm married and <clears throat> as he's saying, you know, it does come with difficulties at times and uh, you know, you're not going to be the Rajel, the man every single day. You know, it's um, it's a constant battle. I mean, the only way to stay that is you're going to be constantly facing problems. You understand what I'm saying? You have to uh, constantly combat those and learn how to, to deal with them. And we can learn, you know, so far that what we've seen, the, the behavior patterns of the Prophet Muhammad and behaving in, in that fashion is a way to deal with those problems correctly, you know, is uh, by being humble and responsible. And when, you know, bad things happen, be the Rochelle, be the man, and solve the problem on the spot, you know? All right, let's go. We love women, but no one wants to be married. That's why Zina is widespread. That's why brothers now, they're getting married on the darkies in secret. You know, these, you know, these secret marriages. The brother comes to tell me, brother, it's halal. Please sit down, yeah? Sit down. Stop trying to play with the deen. Stop trying to play with the deen. Brothers are getting married to sisters with no mahram. No one there. No one. No one there to represent her. No one there to, to, to acknowledge. No one there. Nothing. Nothing but a phone call, text messages. Brothers with beads, they're marrying women in secrets. Why? Little boys. He thinks he's a Rochelle. You're a little kid. You're a little boy with hormones. That's all you are. You're not any different to me. You're not any different to every man here who has desires and has shower. But the difference is being a man or being a male, being a boy. Anyone can get married, my brothers. Anyone can sleep with someone. But a real man, a real Rochelle, my young brothers, he gets married and understands that in marriage, it's not all rainbows and lollipops. It's difficulties. Yeah, there's good times, no doubt. But there's hardship. And that's why it's half your deen. It's half your faith. Ah. Little boys. We love women, but we don't like to be married. We love kids. Have you noticed? I love kids. We love kids. But no one wants to be a father. What do you mean be a father? What do you mean be a father? You know why? Because in the Sikh society, yeah, the same society that says this is Rajel, the same society that says this is the man, the same society that says, brother, this is the man, that's the same society that doesn't praise fatherhood. We love kids, everyone loves kids. But no one likes to be a father, man. That's why most of our so-called men, you know, the little boys that are stuck in big bodies, he's married, married with kids. And wallahi, qasam by Allah, three, four, sometimes five days a week, he's hanging out with his mates in cafes until nine, ten o'clock at night, bro while his wife and his kids are at home waiting. Is that haram? I'm not saying it's haram. Remember what I said in the beginning. Halal and haram, this is kindergarten language. But your wife is at home waiting. Your kids are at home and where? Where is he? Two, three, four, five days a week. He's hanging out in cafes. Grown men, wallahi, I see brothers with beards hanging out at cafes on the corner, sitting outside looking at women as they go and come. But because he has a taru and there's two, three of them, Huh? That he's a man. We love kids. But no one wants to be a father. Don't you ever think, my brother, that you having a child makes you a father. 
Don't you think that having a child makes you a man? Wallahi, forgive me with all respect and all honor and all ranks. You know, the dog, the kalb, the kalb, the dog, the animal. The dog sometimes has eight pups, eight puppies in one lira. Does that make him a man? Does that make him a man? No, it doesn't make him a man. Your ability to have children doesn't make you a man. Your ability to raise those children, your ability to father those children, that's what makes you a man, bro. Ah. We love money. But no one wants to. No one wants to work, bro. <laughs> we love money. But no one wants to. How much time do I have? Is that then now? Huh? 12 minutes for the Iqama. Ah, 12 minutes for Adan. We love, we love what? Please, my young brothers, please. Tonight's talk is very important for you and I, man. We love money, but no one wants to. No one wants to work, bro. That's why drug dealing and being a runner is so appealing to the young boy. Why? Because he's 16 years old. He's going to earn 200, maybe $250 a day as a runner. Yeah, and he starts off on $250 a day. Straight away, he's earning more money than his father is. So he's 16, his father's 40 something, and he's earning more money. So now it doesn't matter that it's haram income. It doesn't matter that this is ghadab money. It doesn't matter that this is going to earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because all he sees is what in front of him is money. And the very society in which he lives in, is driven by money and wherever he goes it's all designer labels and designer names and brand names so this poor kid he's thinking he's doing the maths he's thinking brother why should uh, so we all love money but no one wants to work today the brother he's 20 25 i know brothers that are 30 he's telling me brother i want to retire by the time i'm 35. Re you know i what he's saying <clears throat> it is true i see it oftentimes is uh and, you know, young men in their, especially in their 20s, is uh, they feel like if they're not being paid a certain amount, that, oh, I just, I don't have to care. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to prove myself. Or they'll just come in on the first day uh, thinking that they know everything. I've seen that so many times throughout uh, the last, I guess, few careers I've had, you know, since I was a teenager. <clears throat> And uh, that doesn't mean that all young men are like that. You know, some young men are upstanding and hardworking, but there seems to be, uh, it's almost like a cancer that spreads of that, that laziness and that entitlement. And you need to, to work hard. You need to know what it's like to fail. Uh, you need to know what it's like to be humble, to earn a, a, you know, a wage that's not good so that you can relate to other people, but also to teach you to work harder. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> that's something that I've been thinking about a whole lot lately. So everything he is saying here in, the, in this uh, lecture is just absolutely, <laughs> it's so on point and it's so important. It's so relevant to what's going on today. All right, let's go. I know brothers that are 30 he's telling me, brother, I want to retire by the time I'm 35. Retired. And I'm kicking back. And I wish, Wallah, I wish he wants to retire at 35 so he can dedicate his life for Deen. No, 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 no. He wants to retire so he can indulge in dunya to the day he dies, bro. Because work is taking him away from his love, his real love, dunya. Cafes and restaurants. Uh, fishing trips. Fishing trips. Holidays, vacations, weekends. See, a real man understands. Abu Bakr radiallahu when he was the Amir, when he was the Khalifa, he went outside and went to the market to earn his dollar. Even in old age, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died with debt. So, 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 so what's happening here? We all love Allah. Have you noticed? Wallahi, go to the junkie. Go to a prostitute. Go to a brother who's a murderer. Tell him, brother, do you love Allah? Everyone loves Allah. But no one wants deen. 
no one wants deen. Brother, how can you love Allah but not have deen? No, no, no. So now there's this sick culture. Have you noticed this culture? Brother, you don't know what's in my heart. My iman is in my heart, brother. My relationship with Allah is in my heart. So now this idea of the heart, it's very poisonous. Why? Because it comes through. Brother, do you know what's in the heart? No, I don't know what's in the heart. But really he's hiding his, he's hiding his hypocrisy with this. So yes, everyone loves Allah. But no one wants deen. Everyone loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brother, please, brother, please, when you say his name, brother. Everyone claims they love the Prophet. But no one wants his sunnah. What do you mean? What do you mean his sunnah? Eat on the floor. Eat with your fingers. Grow a beard. Live simple lives. Ugh. Brother, ugh. what's that? What's that, brother? We love Rasulullah. Wallah, we sing his songs and we'll parade and we'll have big protests when something happens. Ah, we show. But no one wants his sunnah. We love Jannah. We love Jannah. But no one wants to die. Hey, have you heard when someone gets cancer? <gasps> and it, uh, <laughs> did you think you're gonna live forever? <laughs> What's what 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 do you? We love Jannah, but no one wants to, no, no one wants to die. You know, I, I had a uh, benign bone tumor removed from my arm, and uh, this was uh, years ago, but uh, in the first, I think it was two to three weeks before I got the biopsy back, it ended up being a huge pain to get to the correct doctor and all this stuff. and. Uh, you know, in that time uh, when I got the initial x-ray, they told me, you know, okay, this, it looks like you have bone cancer on your humerus. And I was like, oh no, you know, and uh, I had, uh, you know, a lot of uh, thoughts going through my head. I think, yeah, I was like in my early thirties at the time. And, uh, you know, I was still young and uh, I still feel young now. And uh, like I said, the results had not come back yet. And in that whole time, the only thing that ever brought me any comfort with kind of like that impending bad news or that feeling of it was eventually to the conclusion it's God's will, you know? And I was thinking like, what have I done with my life? The decision, the decisions that I've made up until this point, you know, what have I done? You know, and I started thinking about all my regrets and the stupid things that I've done and said, and I had all this opportunity to try to do good and to try to be better and I didn't do it, you know? And um, <clears throat> I think we all have key moments in our life that change us forever. And that was definitely one of the key moments for me, you know, so you don't know, and, uh, you know, uh, thank God I was lucky. I was blessed by God. It uh, ended up being benign. I had to wear uh, a cast or not a cast, but like a sling for, I think it was, I don't know. I think it was like three months to let the, the bone like heal and like heal itself uh, back together. Cause they had to remove 60% of it. And, you know, there was a lot of uh, like rehab and physical therapy. And then finally I got back to, you know, basically normal, but yeah, I just wanted to share that story with you guys because you don't know when something's going to happen. You know, I got so lucky. I was blessed by God that it was not, uh, you know, it didn't kill me. It was a benign tumor, but you know, hey man, all right, let's go. But no one wants to, no, no one wants to die. Tell me, my brothers, is this the quality of a man? No. Thank you. This is not the quality of a regime. It's not the quality of a man. A man is realistic. A man is realistic. A man is honorable. You know what this Ummah is suffering from, my brothers? Trust me, it's not knowledge. The alam is ocean. Books, books, apps. Wallahi, jump on YouTube. 
hours and hours and hours of talks and bayans and khutbas and classes and knowledge is there, it's abundant. What is this ummah suffering from more than anything? The biggest disease, the biggest sickness of the Muslims, the, the biggest calamity in the ummah, do you know what it really is? There's no men. And you know who suffers the most when there's no men? You know who suffers the most? Women and children. When there's no rijal, who suffers? You know, in English they say... In yeah, it's not just Islam either. It's it's the entire world, the abandonment of God. And um, st from a statistical standpoint of men being men, it, it's, it's probably the lowest that it's ever been. You know, it's, it's bad and it's become um, culturally acceptable and even rewarded and, and spoken highly of like these weak behavior patterns. And we all need to stay away from that. And again, we're all going to have face problems almost on a daily basis, a weekly basis. Things are going to come at us, uh, peer pressure and just, uh, you know, problems things going wrong at work whatever but you have to you have to be the Brazil you have to you're gonna fail sometimes you get back up you learn from that mistake you got to keep going you know I can't stress how important that this is to me everything he is saying saying right now is so important to me it's been on my mind and we all have to do something about it all of us men we must it's no Rijal who suffers you know in English they say in English they say when the cats away Guess who come to play? Who? Say it, say it out loud so others hear it. Ah, uh, when the cat's away, there's no cat. When there's no Rajal, when there's no man, when the cat's away, who comes to play? Ah, uh, the rats and the mice. No men, rats and mice. Look at our societies. When there's no Rajal, Wallah, when there's no men, you know, an imam once, an imam, true story, I heard this with my own ears, an imam once who was narrating his story, please, wallahi, I will wrap it up, but just stay with me, these are the last very important moments. Imam said once he was preparing for Friday khutbah, he said, so I'm sitting in my office and I'm trying to prepare my khutbah, he said that my son, he was four or five years old, you know, he's driving me crazy, man, every time I put pen to paper, he jumps on me and he wants to play, he's a little boy. So the Sheikh is thinking, he's thinking, you know, look, your Allah, this kid's driving me crazy. Uh, remember, but to be a man is to be a father also. Uh, so, so for us, we would do our, give him an iPad, get him off your back. Yeah, this is the father now. This is the 21st century father. Yeah, give him an iPad, get him off your back. So the Sheikh is saying, man, look, I need this kid off my back. I need to prepare my khutbah. How do I engage the kid? Give him something constructive. So the Sheikh was saying, the Imam says, he says, I had a magazine. I'm freaking through the magazine and I found the picture of the, of the world, a globe. It was a picture of the globe. So the Sheikh said, look, let me rip this page out and I'll cut it into a little puzzle. Yeah, I'll cut the countries into pieces and I'll give it to the boy and I'll tell him to put it together. He's thinking this will keep, yeah, this will keep him busy at least for an hour. Get him off my back. He said, I cut the picture. I gave it to my son. I said to my son, listen, put the world, put the world together. So the Imam said, the boy took it. I'm thinking, huh, finally now I can gather my thoughts and put the khutbah together. He said within a few minutes, a few minutes, the boy was back and the world was put together. So the Sheikh's thinking, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> my son a genius, <laughs> he's a little boy. So the Sheikh says, he says, my son, Allahu Akbar, Tabarakallah, how did you know where Europe is and the Americas and the Africas and yeah, yeah, the kid doesn't go to school, how did you know? He said to him, well, Father, I, know, I don't know. He said, so how did you put the world together? He said, Dad, on the other side of the picture, there's a picture of a man. So I put the arms together and the legs together and the head together. So the Imam said what? He said, SubhanAllah, you gave me my topic. When man comes together, the world comes together. But Qasim by Allah, as long as man is destroyed, this world will always be destroyed. Rijal, who suffers the most when the cat's away? The mice will play. 
Brothers come to me all the time. And I'm going to wrap up with this and I'll try to. Brothers come to me all the time and they tell me, Brother, our women, Allahu Akbar, our sisters, all the Bilal, brother, what's this? What's this? Our women have become ruthless. They, they, there's, there's no more haya. There's no more, you know, our women are wearing whatever they want and they're carrying on. And, and you know what? Wallah, wallah, I genuinely, I agree. Genuinely, I agree. I mean, what I'm seeing outside, this is ridiculous. But then I'm thinking to myself, but okay, so now who do you address? Who do you address? Have women lost their ways? Absolutely. You know, the other, not the other day, but a while back, I was driving. This is a true story. I was driving here yeah? and I was in Greenacre. What's that street called, man? You know, the one that's in front of Mr. Shawarma, that there's so Waterloo Road and then there's a... Banksia and Waterloo, yeah? So, so I'm on Banksia and I'm coming to Waterloo and it's a left turn. I'm uh, sorry, uh, uh, there's a no right turn. You can only turn left. And there's a sign as big as your head right there in front of you. No right turn. So I come and I want to turn left. But there was a sister in front of me. Barakallah, what a sister, bro. Yeah, Habibi. So there's a sister there. She's in front of me, yeah? She's wearing her nice scarf and her makeup and her claw nails and, and, and the music's on and she's got the window down. I'm thinking, yeah, Habibi, yeah, Habibi. Look at this spanner. Anyway, so now I'm standing there and guess what she's doing? She's got her blinker to turn right. Yeah, Allah, what I'm seeing, bro. <laughs> No right turn! Wallah, is there a sign like this? No right turn! So I'm thinking, man, you know, and I'm looking like this. What do you do? <laughs> oh, khalas, be patient, bro. <laughs> Unless you turn right, you know. But in my heart, I'm burning, I'm burning. And I'm waiting, 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 bro. It's a couple of minutes now. You can't turn right, like it's a very busy right there. That's why there's a no right turn. So I'm thinking, you know, you know, I'm hopeless looking like this. You know, if I beat the horn, yeah, it's very difficult, man. Anyway, after a few minutes, remember what the Rajel is, he can control himself. Well, obviously, I couldn't control myself. So well, I was very, very sensitive. Well, like, I'm thinking, you know, I left the boys see me. So I went, beep, like, like, yeah, and he's shitting, no, I touched the horn. Khalas, <laughs> <laughs> bro, I turned left. As soon as she heard the horn, she looked at the rearview mirror like this. <laughs> she put her window down and said, What? What? Allah, <laughs> sister, take your time, brother. <laughs> she wants to punch on. What? This is our women. Is our women. So the brothers are complaining, brother, look at our women, look at our women, they've lost their way, they lost their way. And I say, well, it's true, but tell me something, who do you blame? Who do you hold responsible? Because in one token, yes, our women, unfortunately, have lost their way, but then look at the men. Look at the men, the same brother that's telling me, brother, look, you know, our women are out of control. This is the same brother who takes a photo with his wife while his wife is in hijab with her red lipstick and her eyelashes. Tabarakallah. He'll take a picture with her. She's smiling and he's smiling. And then he puts it on his WhatsApp profile. That's his, uh, this is his profile picture. So now every guy that has his phone number, when he's sitting in the toilet, flicking through his phone, he has exclusive access to his wife. And he's smiling. Where's the honor? Where's the hira? So yeah, you know what? It's very easy to look at the women and say, brother, but remember when the cat's away, guess who come to play? There's no men. Where are the men in the society? I had a brother once. I had a brother. He came to me with his wife. A brother came with his wife, gave me salam, and I'm thinking, oh, this is awkward, bro. This is, again, it's not halal haram. I'm not speaking about halal and haram. So he comes up to me, he gave me salam. I'm thinking, oh, my God, yes, yeah, alaikum. I'm thinking, this is awkward. And then he gets me, uh, brother, this is my wife. I'm thinking, oh, okay, salam alaikum. So she puts her hand there and she gets me, salam alaikum, brother. So I'm thinking, Wallah, yani, do I headbutt you first or do I headbutt your husband? Or do I just do a clothesline and just knock out the both of you? What do you mean, Salaamu Alaikum, brother? And he's standing there. <laughs> Look, Wallah, 
Wallah, it's not because he's bad. Wallah, it's not because he's an evil person. But because there's no men in our society, the very concept of ghira and honor has been lost. Have our women lost their way? Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. But who do you blame? Who do you blame? Who do you blame? This sister that's leaving the house looking the way she looks. Where's her father? Where's her brother? Where's her nephew? Where's her... Where are they? They're busy fishing, bro. They're busy at cafes. You know, I just want to speak on this real quick. And um, I know the big thing with women now is I'm a strong, independent woman. And no man can tell me what to do. And I'm going to make my own career, my own life, and all this. <clears throat> Uh, there, there are men that they try to protect you, even with just by giving you your advice, your father, your brother, your husband, um, because they know the nature of man. And there are a lot of evil men out there with evil nature, and they view you as nothing more than a sexual object, period. You know, and they're not worried about, uh, you know, heaven, hell, or, uh, you know, they're not worried about that. They're just thinking about their, their like, human desire to do that. So... <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's on all of us, on all men, you know, we all haven't done enough. Even if we've been doing a good job, we haven't done enough. You know, we got to step it up everywhere. All right, let's go. They're busy fishing, bro. They're busy at cafes. They're busy chasing other women like little boys. So yeah, bro, our women lose their ways. Stop laughing. Stop laughing. So what? Our women, they lose their ways. Honor, honor, just, just honor, bro. Ghira, ghira. Ghira is a shell. It's not there. So now brothers come, brother, what are you trying to say? You know, wallah, niqab and sutra, brother, what's this? You know, is this? Again, again, brother, is this sunnah? Is this halal? Wallah, it's not halal and haram. Forget sunnah, no sunnah. Just where's your heart, bro? Where's your heart? You as a man, as an honorable person, where's your dignity? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was sitting with two of his wives. Was sitting with two of his wives. Today, today, when we have barbecues, my wife and your wife and his wife and the Allah and we're all together. <laughs> and wallahi, brothers are sitting having dinner, having dinner. Him and his wife and me and my wife and I'm talking to his wife and he's talking to my wife and he's laughing and we're laughing and we're giggling and this is, this is considered as, what? This is advancement, brother. Yeah, come on, man. What's this sutra? And while the girls upstairs, well, what's it? this is backwards. This is backwards in our hearts. No, no, no. It's not that it's backwards. If there was a single rajal, just one rajal, you, Allah, he would never ask, is this sunnah or farad? He would never ask, brother, is this appropriate or not? As a rajal, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is he rajal or not? Don't, please don't answer. Don't embarrass yourself. The Prophet is he a rajal or not? Today, Wallahi, I see my shaykh shaking hands with women. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. And Wallah. Again, not halal and haram. But, ah, oh, my heart. Wallahi, my heart burns. The Prophet sitting with two of his wives. Two of his wives. He's sitting there, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Someone knocks the door. Yalla, where's this sunnah now? So the Prophet goes to check. It was Abdullah ibn Madhum. You know who the man is? Sahabi, he was blind. You know Abasa wa Tawalla, the blind man that came to us. Abdullah, him! He was the Mu'addin of Rasulullah, he's knocking on the door. He's blind! The man's blind! So he gets up and he sees Abdullah. And he says to his wives, Abdullah is on the door. Stand up, the both of you, and go behind the sutra, go behind the veil. So they said, the oh, Prophet of Allah, Abdullah is blind, he can't see us. He said, yes, but you're not blind, you can see him. So get up and go behind the veil. Yalla. Tell your father this. Wallah, he'll slap you, he'll slap your sheikh, he'll slap the masjid that you go to. Brother, what's this backwards thinking? Please, please. The Prophet of Allah and this Abdul, Wallahi, with all adab and respect to Abdullah bin. You know, I, I, I really don't imagine Abdullah being anywhere near as handsome as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So really there's no threat. And when you're married to the Prophet of Allah, you're not going to look at anyone in any way. But what? 
Today our women don't possess haya. Forget, forget. The men of the, the men of Rasulullah had haya. You know, just to understand, the English language, the whole English language, please sit down, please sit down. The whole English language doesn't have a single word, not challenge, not a single word to translate the word haya. That speaks volumes about its societies. Hayat comes from the word life. Ulama say whoever doesn't have hayat, he might as well be dead. I hope the sisters are listening. Today it's all about the platform. The platform. Mashaykh, wallah, a sheikh came to me. Wallah, a sheikh came to me and said to me, brother, how come you don't have sisters in your videos? How come? How come you don't have sisters in your videos? I said to him, Sheikh, Allahu Akbar, are you really asking me this? He said to me, yes, brother, yes. We have a problem. What's the problem? You want me to put a sister in the video? He said to me, yes, brother. I said to him, Sheikh, would you give me your wife to put her in my video? Come on, give me your wife, Sheikh. Give me your wife so I can sit and talk to her. She talks to me and I laugh and she laughs and we giggle and she giggles. And then once the camera goes off, I have a coffee with her and she has a coffee. And yeah, you know what? Don't worry about it. It's all fine. Today, sisters want the platform. Today, if you, if you stay reserved, brother, you're not a man. A real man is loud, he's noisy, he's... he's, he's we need to restore men. This ummah is suffering from a lack of men, my brothers. Ask yourself tonight, are you a rijal or are you a dhakar? Are you a man or are you a mayun? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us men. Men whom he's pleased with. Men whom revive this ummah. Jazakallah khairan subhanakallah wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tuhu. I'm so glad we watched that. I know I've been uh, speaking to at least uh, some of the things that uh, Muhammad Hoblos here was was speaking about, and I've been thinking about it a lot. And as men, we all have to step up. You know, like I said, we're all there's going to be challenges, and you're going to fail, but you have to learn from those failures and keep moving forward. You know, it's uh, we all want to be the Rajel every single day to the best of our ability, but like I said, <laughs> sometimes there's going to be difficulties, and that's just the way it is. You know. Um, I just, I really, I, I really needed to hear that. I love hearing those kind of talks to uh, reinforce um, how important that is for us to be men in society, uh, because that's it, man. Again, it's uh, people uh, just abandoning God and not wanting to be men. You know, it's like this uh, satanic culture that has taken over, you know, and I believe uh, basically the core tenet of Satanism is that you are your own God, like no God exists and you decide what is moral and what is right and what is wrong. And we've seen, you know, even if people in society don't say that they're a Satanist, they've never read the Satanic Bible or they've never even spoken to a Satanist, they have that exact same behavior pattern and it's self-destructive and it's destructive to society, you know. Uh, man, <sighs> yeah, <laughs> I think I could go on all night with this, but um, I do have to get out of here pretty soon. I really enjoyed that, and I would like to see more from uh, Muhammad Hobos for sure. Um, I hope that you guys have a great week. I hope you have a blessed week, and I hope that each one of us has at least one opportunity to be a real man this week, you know, in a very difficult situation to help uh, remind us that, you know, that's what we're here to do. That's part of our mission. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> thank you guys for watching as always. Uh, I hope you have a great week ahead, and I will definitely be seeing you pretty soon. Have a good one.